other side for the filmmaker is just... Access. That's the way the White House works, same way. You prove your loyalty to the president, you prove you're going to support what his programs are, and they'll call you in and give you access. In recent years, the ties between the Defense Department and the studios have stretched well beyond the realm of show business, as witnessed by this building built in 1999 in downtown Los Angeles. The Pentagon spent $50 million to create the Institute for Creative Technologies, the laboratory of the future. Military officials hired a full cast of film professionals, directors, screenwriters, special effects technicians, to come up with new tools to train soldiers for warfare. The Institute is headed by Richard Lindheim, former head of special effects at Paramount. Now comes the Vistarama immersive digital experience, and it puts you in the picture. You are at the Institute for Creative Technologies in Marina del Rey, California. And you're at a facility which was designed by Herman Zimmerman, who's the production designer of Star Trek. All this will be possible as ICT continues to develop the technology of the future. For the past five years, the ICT has been developing battle simulation technology for the U.S. military. The Flat World Project merges media technology with cinema stagecraft. Scientist Gerald Pear demonstrates his star program. In an actual training scenario, a soldier could basically use these virtual portals to view action occurring outside the room. Interesting. Yeah. So here the soldier is wearing special glasses that give him an enhanced sense of depth. The screen does not look flat. And as you see here, the soldier can observe a uh, helicopter moving. And one of the advantages of the system is the fact that uh, he can also open this other door and have another viewpoint. We can also cha change the entire surface of the uh, digital flat for example, now we are giving the appearance that we're inside a cave overlooking a vast desert. However, in this case, we have a butterfly. And to the soldier, this butterfly will appear to pop out of the screen and float in the middle of the room. He is able to look under the butterfly, and he can also look around it and look around the corner. Basically, they may have a real radio in their hand. A commander may be t asking them to observe activity out here. They may see a tank or a truck, and the commander may ask them to evaluate whether this is an enemy truck or a civilian truck. And um, the soldier will be faced, you know, will have to make a decision of whether this truck should be uh, neutralized or whether it's something they should let pass by. Decision-making training is one of you know, our key focus here. This prototype is already being used to train combat units. Other simulators created by ICT look more like traditional video games. But they incorporate far more sophisticated technology than those sold on the open market. The scenarios are always drawn up to reflect United States defense strategy. The scenario used in this simulator is based on US soldiers' experiences in Bosnia. It was put together by Larry Touch, the writer behind the series, Columbo. The story? An American Army unit out on assignment comes across a GI patrol that has been involved in a car accident that left a child seriously injured. In this type of simulation, the soldier must decide whether to order his unit to stay and attend to the injured child, or to keep going and complete its initial mission. The exercise tests the soldier's reaction in unexpected battlefield situations. The simulator belongs to the Pentagon, which holds the rights to everything invented at the ICT. The studio can market civilian versions of the game. What does Hollywood do? What, is, what do games do? They put you in that situation. So having Hollywood writers writing real characters, creating the kind of situations that can exist, is really the first attempt at being able to use that kind of expertise in a learning environment to train to leaders to make better decisions. 
This new trend grew even stronger after September 11th. At the Pentagon's request, the ICT set up a series of meetings between military officials and 30 Hollywood creators in downtown Los Angeles. The main focus was on current threats to the United States. David Engelbach, scriptwriter for the cult series MacGyver, attended the meetings. No. So is any reason why you cannot? Because they asked us not to discuss these things. I mean, we did sign agreements of confidentiality. And because this is an ongoing process, and because we are still involved, we as a country and the government, is still involved in pursuing um, um, international terrorism, we were not told to avoid talking about certain things. It's just, I think, common sense, and given the nature of what we, the sensitive nature of what we discussed, that I, I wouldn't feel comfortable talking about that. Uh, I did, in fact, go last summer to uh, uh, the Carnegie Institute for Peace in Washington at, at their request to attend a seminar on uh, radical Islam, which I found to be very useful. Um, only is kind of background that uh, for if there were other opportunities to or uh, to meet and discuss stuff, I would have more information. Is the Pentagon trying to influence script content? Though Hollywood denies it, the backstory in recent films and video games has changed dramatically. In the latest simulators developed by the ICT, for instance, the situation may be imaginary, but the setting is very suggestive. The adversary's clothing and the Arab-like scenery leave no doubt about the culture posing the threat. The enemy is Muslim. The Iraq and Afghanistan wars hover nearby. We're not selling propaganda, either flag-waving or critical propaganda. Uh, but I think it helps to, to understand what people would be reacting to, because we are involved in a culture, uh, uh, a conflict of cultures, whether we like it or not. If the Cold War lasted, what, from the end of World War II until the breakup of the Soviet Union, that was 50 years. I think we're looking at another 50 years of, of conflict between um, radical Islam and, uh, democratic, and the democratic West. We have seen a lot of ideas uh, for movies involving special forces, particularly. Uh, whether it be based on real incidences in, in Afghanistan, particularly, or uh, just, gee, that was a great image of those guys on horseback in Afghanistan, which we all saw all around the world, and the thought that um, a modern army is now going back to horseback. Well, that's, that got all these people thinking, special forces, gee, how cool are they? Let's do a movie about them. So there has been a lot more interest in doing something like that. Are you pleased that there is this Very pleased. Um, it, it, and pleased in one way, particularly, in that it's um, an interest in the modern army. Uh, most movies have, uh, in the past, in the more recent past, have been set at a different time. So it would be nice to see a movie that actually shows what we do today. This is an old idea of an alliance between Hollywood and the government. It's not something new. Uh, it did work. It brought us into a war. I mean, the, the alliance with the news networks, cable news networks, Hollywood, and a White House disinformation office has convinced Americans that a war in Iraq was a war against terrorism, which I think today we, we know is not the case. Um, I think that Hollywood is misleading for many people because that's where a lot of people get their information from in the United States, is from Hollywood, or their, or their ideas and their concepts. Saving Private Jessica was the first fictionalized movie on the war in Iraq. It was broadcast in November on NBC. Whether or not Jessica's story was a real rescue or a publicity stunt, we may never know. But one thing is certain, film studios are still one of the best tools for putting a positive spin on war.